This is one of the most precious things in my whole workshop. It's an actually good quality Tiny Whoop battery. But this video is not about the batteries themselves. No, 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 no. This video is about why our Tiny Whoop batteries suck so much. Even if you buy good ones like this, after a while they suck and they perform really badly. And this charger, which has a feature that will prevent that. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. The V5 Whoop Store in this video was sent to me by VFly for the purposes of this review. I did not purchase it with my own money. I have not received any cash or any other form of compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any pre-approval or conditions on the contents of this video before it was released. The first reason why your tiny whip batteries perform poorly is that these tiny little cells are just very difficult to make well. But that's not the only reason, because this, we call it the square cell style of battery, and these are newbie drone nitro nectars, but there are others you can get. I'll put links in the video description if you want to get them. They are extremely well made, tiny whoop batteries. They perform very well. But they're not going to perform well for long if you don't put them at storage voltage. So lipos, when left fully charged or excessively discharged, when they're left that way for a long period of time, their performance degrades. And with tiny whoop batteries, that problem is made even worse. Because typical tiny whoop chargers, like this Beta FPV or this Nubi Drone Nitro Nectar, there's nothing wrong with them, but they don't have a storage charge mode like your bigger charger. So what you do is you charge your batteries up before a day of flying, you chuck them in your case, you go and fly, and at the end of the day, some of your batteries are fully charged, some of them are empty because you were flying them, and none of them are at storage voltage unless you are one of those weirdos who stops flying at 3.8 volts per cell, in which case you're like flying for 30 seconds and you're done. No, you don't do that with tiny whoops. You fly your batteries all the way down, sometimes to 3.1 volts or 3.0 volts per cell. And at the end of the day, all these batteries are in the worst possible state. And then what do you do? What do you do? You go home, chuck them in a drawer, and the next time you go to fly, they are all wrecked, eventually. And that brings us to the V-Fly Whoop Store, which, in my opinion, is the best Tiny Whoop battery charger you can get today. And one of the reasons it's so good is that it has a storage function. Just like larger battery chargers, it can put your Tiny Whoop batteries at 3.8 volts per cell for storage, and that will keep them healthy longer. But before I show you how that function works, let's just take a look at this charger. So it is a six channel charger. There are BT 2.0 ports on top and PH 2.0 ports on the sides. You can use either. V1 of this charger had a problem where the BT 2.0 ports were not actually official BT 2.0 ports and had issues. The issue is fixed and is not a problem on this version. The charger can be powered from an XT60, a DC barrel plug, or from USB-C power delivery up to 12 volts. Uh, and there's only one thing about this charger that I would change today, and it is that the input voltage range only goes up to 21 volts, a 5S battery. It needs to take a 6S battery input, so you can just plug in one of your 6Ss like you have a zillion of. That's the only thing about this that bugs me, and I wish it... Uh, Fifi, fix it in the V3, please. Okay, if we plug this in... The unit powers up, it's got a very nice screen, and the screen shows the input voltage, the charge rate, it defaults to 0.2 amps every time you power cycle, which is also a little annoying. I'd like it to stay at the last charge rate that I selected, but not a deal breaker. And it shows whether it's set to HV or normal LiPos, 4.35 or 4.2 volts. There's a switch right here that switches between them, HV versus LV. Most whoop batteries that we're going to be using are going to be HV, so you just leave it there. Right here, it shows the target voltage that we're going to charge to. So if I flip that switch again, you can see it changes from 4.2 to 4.35. It shows the function, charge, and it is ready to go. If I plug in a couple of batteries, we can see another really cool thing about this charger. It shows the battery voltage on each of the inputs individually, so you could use it as a cell checker. And as you're plugging batteries in, if you like accidentally plug one in that's fully charged and you're like, oh, I'll take that out and I can fly it, you can quickly see. Once the packs are plugged in, we're going to short press this button to change the charge rate. And if I'm in a hurry, so I'm just going to charge these at 0.9 amps is the maximum it will do. These are 450 milliamp hour cells, so 0.9 amps is 2S 
or 2C, that's not, not a big deal. And then when I'm ready to go, I long press to begin charging and they individually charge up. While they're charging, we've got a status LED here and it'll turn green when they're ready. Uh, and there you go. In order to demonstrate the storage function, I can long press to stop the cycle and it now reads ready. And I'm just gonna flip this switch here on the front to storage mode. And this is a little surprising. It storage charges to 3.85 volts. And even if I change to a, a, a 4.2 volt standard LiPo, it still storage charges to 3.85 volts. I'd rather see it storage charge to 3.8 volts, but I guess that's still better than leaving them fully charged. When I'm ready to go, I just long press. And now it is storage charging and it will both charge up and discharge. Uh, it's easier, so I've, there was, I've seen some prototypes of chargers that would store charge with batteries, but they would only charge them up, they wouldn't discharge them. This one does both. In addition, uh, I don't know if the manufacturer recommends this, but if I want to, I can just go ahead and plug in a pack in the middle of a cycle, and it will individually take care of that pack. You can see now this one is also storage charging, and I'll just plug this one in, and it is storage charge. Oh, this one's coming down to from 4.0. It just does its business. In fact, it seems to me that if you just start charging some packs, as long as you always have one pack charging and it doesn't finish the cycle, you could just keep plugging packs in all day long and we just keep charging them. If you're thinking to yourself, how did I not know about this? This charger is so great. Then you should also know about my website, fpvknowitall.com, home of the ultimate FPV shopping list, where I have product recommendations in lots of different categories, including a new page that we just added recently about tiny whoop parts. And sure enough, if you go to battery chargers, there is the VFly Whoop Store, as well as a bunch of other interesting stuff that you might wanna know about. The ultimate FPV shopping list I say it's the right parts, the stuff that works. It's not always the newest stuff, but it is solid recommendations that we can make, we can stand behind, and that we think are good for you. Now, one thing I really wanna know is, is there voltage on these BT 2.0 connectors while I've got this uh, PH 2.0 plugged in? Because if there is, here, let me stop the charge cycle just in case. And in fact, let me just unplug it. If there is voltage on these BT 2.0 connectors, then if you were to plug in a BT and a PH at the same time, you would uh, potentially have a problem. I'm gonna be very careful here to try not to short circuit this with my probes. Yeah, okay. So uh, they are just connected in parallel. So don't plug a BT and a PH into the same channel at the same time, or you'll put them in parallel. and. Eh, probably nothing will happen, but maybe something will happen. Before we conclude that the VFly Whoop Store is the best, we gotta look at its price and we'll compare it to a couple other chargers that I have uh, and see how it stacks up. The Newbie Drone Nectar Injector has four ports. It's PH 2.0 only. It can be switched from normal to HV and it takes power only from USB input. It costs about $15. This Beta FPV charger has six channels. It has BT 2.0 and PH 2.0 plugs. It can be switched from 4.2 to 4.3 volts and it takes power via USB. It costs about $20. And based on everything it brings to the table, I mean, based on the fact that the VFly Whoop Store can double as a cell checker, that alone is a five or $6 value, at least maybe a little bit more. Uh, I think it is well worth the money. The VFly Whoop Store, with all the features that we've talked about, including the storage mode, is $30. So it's about twice as expensive as the Nectar injector and about $10 more expensive than the Beta FPV charger. I think compared to the Beta FPV charger, it's a no brainer. You're going to save that extra $10 in batteries that don't die because you were able to put them in storage mode and the Whoop Store has a screen which lets you use it as a battery checker. I think that's a no brainer. I could see an argument that the ne Nectar injector at half the price, if you just didn't care about all that stuff, might be worth it. Oh, I also want to show you one other thing that maybe solves that 6S problem. This little adapter takes an XT60 input and it can take 6S input and converts it to USB-C power delivery. So you can plug in to the uh, VFly Whoop Store that way and you can charge your batteries off a 6S LiPo. Now that's additional money that you might not want to spend, but I happen to have it laying around anyway. I'll put links to all that stuff down in the video description. They are affiliate links and that means that when you make any purchase 
at the affiliated store. After you click that link, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to help me out by clicking those affiliate links before you do your shopping. There's links to all these products down below. Uh, in the meantime, if you are interested in some testing I did to prove that these Square Cell Whoop batteries are the best you can possibly buy. I'll put a link, I'll put a card on screen with that video, as well as a link in the video description. Check that out. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.